What's going on everybody? It's your boy Payne. Welcome back to another Tower of God New World video. All right guys, tier list. Tier list time. I know a lot of you guys are always looking forward to tier list. So I've done something a little different this time, okay? This time I've actually gone over to the community and I've requested help from the Discord in terms of building what we think is going to be the best tier list up to chapter 16, okay? So a lot of us who are free to play or dolphins are currently working our way towards that. I'm currently on 10, 20 ish, I'm a little behind obviously, but I am free to play. So I'm gonna take my time and enjoy the game and not rush. Now, a lot of these folks who have given me this input, shout out to them. You know who you are on Discord. Uh, like here, there's High School Girl, there was um, somebody started with an N, he had a Lilo, Lilo, it was a Stitch actually, uh, profile pick, and he's in the Eden Discord with me. So shout out to you. Uh, shout out to my to my guild uh, ball sellers to give their input as well too, and everybody else in the Discord who was actually gracious enough to jump in and give your input into this. It means a lot because normally, if you guys know who I am, I normally would wail in a game and I would have all the info for you guys because I would do all my own testing. But I've turned a new leaf. I'm trying to promote free to play um, and spend within your means, obviously, and I'm trying to lead by example. So. This tier list is made by the community to some extent up to chapter 16. So this is what an early game tier list will look like, maybe to mid game. Because what happens after chapter 16, and thank you again for those who told me this, is it starts becoming two teams and content gets a lot more difficult and you start facing opponents with millions of CP over you, which is combat power, right? So let's talk about this and go over exactly everything this is now keep in mind this is going to include a few different things this is going to be a plug and play dupe or without dupe and i'll explain which ones are are, are where they are with dupes and which ones are where they are without dupes okay so first off for me personally ss and i'm going to explain each one of these as well as we can okay uh, evan obviously ss everybody knows he can be useful on any team without dupes up to that chapter and he will perform just as well with dupes obviously better but easily still the most important character in the game in terms of support uh and survivability evan kale there was some debate here um to move her down to s plus i still personally love her as ss i think she's still the best dps in the game uh and i don't really want to change that because that's just my opinion of it and she's been carrying my team with decent gear all the way across okay so very very important um now moving over to the other ss here and i just recently got her actual second copy i got a dupe of her and that's uh data kuhn Mashanis, and she is absolutely incredible an assassin good dps aoe dps immortality uh and the reason why you'll see data as a hard here and s plus is because i have to compare stall tanks and she out lives him out damages him and does everything better than he does so that's why in the s plus category you're gonna still see him really shine uh, as a stall tank but he's just quite not as good so let's move over to s plus this is your ss guys uh and again thank you for those who have helped me move this around i had a couple more units here and they've now been adjusted accordingly okay so that has a hard here um incredible tank decent dps has immortality every time he switches weapons he doesn't take any damage so really good stall tank up to nine seconds uh, of stalling and, and living so he's actually my backup immor immortal tank next to um uh, uh over here and then you can see here wang Nan also is here as a really really good range dps has immortality himself and revives himself uh not sorry does not have he revives himself but he does do incredible damage and also raises his own crit and crit damage while he does that so from a damage perspective there's really not many out there better than him when you have him low dupes with higher dupes though this individual hats here shines He's easily one of the best DPS in the game. Uh, becomes a lot more, um, a lot more tanky. Because in the beginning, he's just a, he's he's a glass cannon. He just gets absolutely destroyed by everything that moves. So if you have him duped up, he's going to be your main DPS for quite some time. Um, and he shines at it. He's really really good. So uh, Hats is is one of those incredible characters that you have to see build over time, and you'll see his use. Uh, go up as you get those dupes, right? So if you are planning to use him as your main, remember to put him in your wish list as your number one, and hopefully you get multiple dupes of him to copy. I've got him, I think, the three dupes right now. So as free to play, it's not bad it's for a game that's been out only a few, you know, like I think a week and a half. Uh, but we're gonna continue to try to raise him up, anyways. Okay. Uh, and Dorsey, really good assassin, good survivability because she does. Whenever she gets to fatal damage, she goes all the way back, heals herself, and then jumps right back to the back line and completely messes them up. So, um, really good 
uh, unit for damage if if you dupe her. Eventually, when you get up to like the 15s, 16s, I'm being told, her damage becomes really mediocre if she doesn't have high dupes and good gear. But still a really, really good unit uh, and one that is going to be used probably fairly often as the, as the main assassin on people's teams. Uh, and then we're going to go to the strategist, Kun Aguera. And he is actually an amazing CC unit with the ability to do barrier. He does defense down. Uh, he does knockdown on opponents as well, too. Uh, so overall, fantastic CC and great support unit for you uh, if you're looking for a good, um, a good support to use with a dark team specifically because his passive actually gives purple elements 32% at max 5 uh, and then lower, obviously, as, as, you, as, as you dupe him, it gets to 32%, but it starts off lower. But nonetheless, having him in an all-purple elemental team increases their damage substantially right uh bomb the main character incredible unit um honestly give him for free which makes him really useful uh doesn't really require too many dupes to do what he's supposed to do and that is literally buff your units uh increasing their attack and that's mainly the main thing for him is increasing his attack and increasing energy uh gain so really good support unit for light teams and overall just a good unit if you don't have evan he's actually a pretty decent backup to have as a support and then rachel right over here sorry i forgot to add her in there uh so people i had her as people told me to put her up one because she does gather enemies really well uh does do a lot of damage and also has good survivability because she latches on to the unit with the highest defense and then she avoids taking as much damage as she normally would giving her the ability to survive and continuously do damage on units um Pulling the enemies towards the lighthouse is important too, and she also uh, increases um, the uh, Rachel's defense increases by eight percent, eight percent for uh, for ten seconds for every enemy that takes damage. So she's pretty damn tanky for a mage. So overall, these are your S plus units and the ones that are probably going to serve you best. Now remember, guys, this tier list is made by the community with my input, but I'm only at ten twenty. These are folks who are at sixteen and higher, and that's still considered early game to mid game at that point so this is a mid game early to mid game tier list for those players who have not been spending and are looking to advance further and who they should focus on all right all right let's move on to the to the s tier now now some of this might shock you guys but i was told to move him here and that's karaka uh i love him personally i thought he was ss for sure i had him up here and then i was told that to be honest he doesn't survive very much past a certain point like 11 or 12 he just starts dying really really often uh and doesn't become as tanky as he was earlier on so i was requested to move him down here because of that it does require really good gear and a lot of dupes for him to shine so if you're going to be early to mid game unless you're spending a lot of money uh you won't notice him being as good as he is. And if you're already spending a lot of money, this tier list probably won't matter to you because you have now moved on to the two teams, etc. right? Uh, and then going over to uh, Old Mashani, the, the, the adult version, another one that was moved down from S plus to S because I was told that even though she shines early on, once you start getting to like 11, 12, her damage becomes very uh, subpar if, unless you have a lot of dupes of her. And then not to mention, she really only does shine on bosses, right? Because she does single target damage. So um, just keep that in mind. Not the greatest SSR+, plus, but still a good boss unit, especially if you're fighting um, the mock battles. You're probably going to do really well with her there. All right, uh, Nara here, uh, really, really good energy unit. Uh, provides you guys a lot of energy. Um, gives you guys the de uh, decrease the defense of the opponents as well too um, and also um, deals damage and steals the en enemy's energy and then locks them as well not allowing them to do any specials um, every time she does a skill the ally with the highest attack will recover energy so really good for purple units especially purple teams really thrive with her so a good good unit to have there as well uh, and then we have Lior I think I'm saying that correctly hopefully uh, Lore, Lore, I think it's Lore actually, sorry, the green unit over here. Um, so he's a little unique. He does a lot of AoE damage, like a ton of AoE damage. Uh, the only, and he does silence as well too. The only thing with him is he does fall asleep uh, and he has a barrier when he sleeps, so he doesn't really take much damage. And then when he wakes up, um, he recovers 200 HP while he's sleeping, sorry, 200 uh, energy while he's sleeping, and then his attack is increased by 160% for 10 seconds upon waking up. So he does do a lot of damage. He does have that wake-up mechanic where you have to kind of time him a little bit better, uh, but once he does wake up and he does his AoE, he does a lot of it, okay? Uh, so Lazeal, I mean, S makes sense. She's the typical, atypical gotcha healer. 
uh, does everything a healer should do for you. If you have Evan, you probably won't be using her unless you use her in Trial Towers. So not a bad overall unit still to have though. Um, so removes debuffs, sad effects from her allies, uh, does a knockback on opponents, heals uh, people if it's if it's uh, green element, she restores a lot more HP. So she really does belong in a green team. But of course you will have tower, so she'll be useful there for sure. All right, moving over to Michael here. Now, I haven't tested Michael personally, but somebody had told me he's really good with his poison. Um, he becomes immune to jolt, stun, and debuffs, and he increases his own attack by 80% when he does his adrenaline injection, which is a super. Uh, he also paralyzes opponents as well, too, which, with his AoE, uh, and he has the vile toxins, of course, disabling energy recovery for five seconds. So overall, a really crazy good kit. Um, again, I haven't tested him, but I'm being told S is exactly where he belongs, so that's where he's gonna sit for now. Um, moving over to uh, Speedster Eden Dan. So another really unique unit here where he uh, runs at an opponent, deals damage, knocks them down. If he kills them, he returns to the original spot like instantly. And when he does kill somebody, he also gets swiftness plus 40 for 10 seconds. And he's invincible when he does a special. So really unique. He does AoE damage, increases his swiftness quite a bit again on his active. And then he does a counter. And his passive is actually pretty good because every time... Uh, he gains a point of swiftness. He also gains a point, uh, two points of evasion. And every time he evades, he increases um, his attack by 8%, can stack up to five times. So overall, a really unique, I think, build-up unit. I've not tested him again, but this is where I'm being told he's a pretty good unit to go with there, okay? Um, remember, guys, chapter 16 was where this stops. This tier list will change completely at that point. This is an overall tier list. We'll do a PV PvP and PvE one as well, too. Uh, talk about who's good in PvP. Uh, PvE will do like uh, mock battles, trials, etc. And then we'll probably do a class one as well just to differentiate, okay? Uh, so Rack's here as well too. Rack is a unique. He's a good tank because he heals, he raises defense. The only problem with Rack here, and I was almost tempted to put him in A, is he does range attack sometimes where he'll just sit in the back and he won't tank properly. And it just really messes up your whole lineup, right? So um, unfortunately, not sure how I feel about him being an S, but I'll leave him an S for now. You guys let me know in the comment section if you think he deserves to go lower or higher. I still think S is perfect for him, or, or S is okay for him. A might be more perfect for him because of just the unpredictability sometimes, but when he does shine, he brings so much utility to your team, right? And then we have Gamer Hatzling over here who's an incredible AoE. Uh, I had him actually at S+, plus, but uh, some of the higher-end players told me that um, he hasn't been tested enough at high-end content yet, or even 15, 16, he doesn't really shine that much without a lot of dupes. So S was a reasonable place to have him there, okay? Uh, Arcraptor, decent unit. Um, does some unique things with his umbrella. Uh, becomes immune to Jolt, gathers Shinsu, the tip of his umbrella. He shoots it in a straight line. Uh, does not, He does six damages per 200%, so that's quite a bit of damage. And has a knockback on his last attack. Um, he also has a way of uh, having physical and magic resistance by 80% whenever his umbrella is up. He can't move or anything, but he does survive quite a bit. And he also raises his basic attack up to 160%. So a very unique ranger in a sense of he has a lot of damage, but also a lot of survivability with his, his active uh, skills. And his passive is not too bad either. Every time his uh, basic attack pierces targets, he gains swiftness or his swiftness does not fluctuate but his attack fluctuates by 2% for every point of swiftness fluctuation. So it, he's a unique character in a sense that he can be really good to keep your team alive by himself keeping alive and letting some of your other DPS kind of just wail on the opponents. And overall, pretty decent damage. All right, going with Yellowy. Uh, you know what? I actually have Yellowy and I have not used her very much, but people say that she's okay where she's at. Uh, so let's talk what she does. So number one, uh, does an AoE with uh, the ability to send people airborne causing them to interrupt obviously and giving you some more time to raise your energy bar or your energy bar um choose a sound wave like an arrow dealing 800 percent attack damage to all enemies in its path knocking them back so she has a knockback and also she has the ability to deal 220 percent four times and locking down opponents uh and then lastly yellow plays an upbeat tune at the start of the battle increasing the crit rate of all allies with the highest attack by 40% and their attack speed by 40%. So that's insane. So having Yellowy with your top DPS, like Hats, for example, um, is, is maybe a really good combination. So for a look, if you're looking for a really good um, crit rate increase and attack speed increase for 15 seconds at the beginning of the battle, her and Hats might be a pretty crazy combo. So that's, a, that's an interesting one, right? Um, okay, moving over to Hansung Yu. Uh, so we get him fairly, or we get her fairly early on. Is it him or her? I can't even tell. To be honest with you, uh, I think it's a him though. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a him. Anyways, uh, decent mage. A little bit slow in attacking, I find. Uh, summons uh, summons three waves with his active. Pushes pe uh, opponents away. Decreases the enemy's attack speed by 80, which is massive. And moving speed by 40 upon 6 seconds when landing the skill. So that part is incredible to be honest especially for things like pvp and pve for progression that's a pretty big one uh active skill is really good too as well uh does damage to an opponents up to 10 times knocking them back um shoots uh cannons at random or shoots uh shinsu cannons at random enemies and then every time he lands a crit he applies the rolling boil effect for five seconds rolling boil decreases the target's magic resistance by 40 percent allowing your other magic users to do even more damage and that is a a passive by the way okay uh an act pretty decent dps not really going to cover too much on that one um a lot of people like like her because of obviously the lore of the character they always compare her to hats for some reason i don't know why hats gets compared to her all the time hats is a much better dps in my opinion but anak is there for for an okay fire dps good for trial towers um let's go to shibisu shibisu is interesting uh, i like his kit but he's also like out there i don't know i don't know how good he is because i've never tried him but i was told uh, a, a is a pretty decent spot. So uh, what he does is he decreases physical and magic resistance of the enemy with the lowest HP by 80% for 10 seconds. Then he commands all allies to attack that target and then recovers 100 energy if that target is defeated. So it seems like a very unique move and a, like almost an assassination move uh, by a support unit. So that's very interesting. He also, throw, with his active, he throws a bomb uh, in a concentrated area of enemies dealing 600% of his attack. Damaging the enemies and decreasing energy by 90% for 10 seconds. So energy recovery is almost non-existent. So I'm curious to see how well he does in PvP modes as well as higher rank content. He might actually really shine with more dupes as well, right? Uh, and then his, his active is he dashes towards the enemy dealing 900% of his attack as damage, stunning them for 3 seconds. And keep in mind, guys, I'm reading this at, at the max dupe level for this unit, right? Those percentages will be lower if you have lower dupes. And then also he increases all of Yellow's attacks by 32% at the start of battle. So he's pretty much uh, Kuhn Aguero if, if you put him with Yellow. So he's probably almost a must-have with all Yellow teams to increase that attack by X amount of percent. Now, again, this is the max dupe I'm reading off from the Codex. Um, but obviously, if you have him at, at one star only or just, just pulled him, that percentage will be much, much lower. But again, maybe a must-have for all yellow teams. So this guy might actually end up going up a slot. I'm going to put him up here just because I think he has a really good passive and pretty decent support moves anyways, right? So uh, let's put him there for now. We'll adjust him. And then we'll see if that changes next month. This will be a monthly uh, tier list anyways, okay? All right, moving over to uh, Blood Road, and that's right over here um so he is a warrior um honestly the biggest thing about him that i notice is he does have a lot of airborne uh and he reduces the recovery time um sorry let me see here targets said everyone have their recovery amount yeah right he has the recovery amount increased decreased by 100 percent for five seconds uh attacks eight times so pretty good there for that uh, it attaches explosive mines to enemies for 5 seconds, reducing the swiftness by 20. The mine explodes at the end of the duration, deals damage, and decreases defense uh, of that opponent by 20%. So not bad for 10 seconds too. Uh, and then he also summons reels to the furthest enemy, uh, bringing them closer, slams them to the ground. His evasion increases by 40, and then uh, as long as he reels the opponent. So there's a chance he can obviously miss it as well. Uh, and if there's any, if there's no enemies nearby, he actually increases his attack by 120% when he's isolated with just one target. So very unique unit, probably really good for bringing um, assassin units or range units closer to you. Sorry. So to bring range units closer so the rest of your team can attack them might be actually a really good method to go with. All right. So not a bad unit. Going to keep him in A. I'll test them when I, when I, I have them. I'm going to test them a little more. But again, I, I feel like these are things that I have to test at higher levels to see how people shine. And these are things that are being told by me um, by some of the actual higher end players. Okay. All right. So uh, Quattro right over here, uh, a burn burn unit uh, does crit damage is, is increased by 20% every time uh, she does her special and they're hit by consecutive hits by that. Um, so that's one, one good thing about her. Her crit damage is really high. Once that happens, uh, creates a barrier on herself up to 40% uh, of the, her max HP for seven seconds. Enemies that touch the Ring of Fire take 120% of attack as damage. In addition, uh, his it's a him, by the way. I'm weird that's a him. It looks like a girl. Um, unless the translation is completely wrong. It, I'm pretty sure it's a girl. Um, anyways, in addition, his attack increased by 40% while the Ring of Fire is active. 
Um, and then the actual uh, active skill shoots flames towards uh, opponents, damaging 120% damage for every 0.5 seconds. For 3 seconds, the enemy's in a fan shape. So you can actually hit quite a few enemies with that. And then, of course, the Master of Flame passive uh, burns enemies struck by the skill, decreases their HP recovery by 30%. So good for stopping healers from going off, okay? Ghost, a pretty good... Um, Magic tank, good magic resist, uh, good magic damage. So good, really well well paired with Evan Kale. I find the two of them work really well together. I've got both of them. Uh, Hor Yang was a was an okay tank, really good defensive abilities, but that's really about it. Um, he was given three. We were given three dupes of him for free. So that's that. Uh, I'm gonna call him Fat Chocobo because um, that's what he is. I feel like Final Fantasy is gonna sue this game for this because they've taken like a staple uh, character away. But uh, that's uh, G Tang, and I was told. S if you max if you dupe a lot, A if you don't dupe a lot, but has a lot of speed and attack, um, and some unique like the attack speed is crazy on this, and then also has uh, a way to reduce magic resistance as well too, uh, and then also here uh, removes debuffs from him um, every time he takes damage and increases his speed by 80. So a really fast attacking unit, but again requires a lot of dupes to really shine. All right, and then we get to the bottom here, the B tier, guys. So Yuri, I was told to put him B, even though we get a lot of dupes, really starts to not be a good tank at all after like 11 or 12. She's good CC early on. She's decent damage early on, but as you progress, she just doesn't do her job at all. Um, a couple other here, uh, noticeable units here. Uh, Mew Love, unfortunately, the, the, the alt or the passive... It's just like the best passive is the, the the skill that he does when he's solo with somebody else or there's only one opponent, but by then everyone else gets the job done. So not the greatest unit to use, unfortunately. Uh, I had him early on with a lot of dupes, so I was using him anyways. He did okay, but as I started getting further and further into the game, he started just dropping off for damage completely. So um, Chiyoung, I think here, the, the, light, the yellow assassin also... Uh, I was told barely does any damage at all. So he was an A for me originally. I was told to move him to C. And then I have Prince, uh, Lurker Kim, and uh, Misong here. I have not tested them. So if you guys have idea of what these guys should be and where they should belong in the tier list, let me know in the comment section. Remember, we're considering up to chapter 16, not early, early game. So let me know what you guys think, whether it's with dupes or without dupes. I need to still test these units. I don't have them. So if anyone is watching, please let me know what you guys think. And overall, let me know what you think of the tier list. Again, this is made by the community. I went to Discord and I, I gathered a lot of information from some very knowledgeable people who are ahead of me. Again, it's so rare to do this, but I love it because it, it actually um, does engagement with you guys and I get to also learn something from you and we all get to kind of participate in this wonderful tier list. All right, guys, this is Payne. Hope you enjoyed the tier list. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.